First, right click on Enemy Canvas, go to UI, and then Text. Set the X and Y scale to 0.3. Set the width to 200 and the height to 78. Set the position Y to 2.6, the font size to around 40, and align the text to the center. I also changed the color and added a shadow. Name the prefab CBT for combat text. Once your text is set up, drag it into your assets to create a prefab. Don't delete the text in the scene. We're going to use it later, so just disable it for now. Open your enemy script and add a public game object that we can pass the combat text into. Instantiating UI elements dynamically requires several lines of code, so I usually like to separate it into its own function. Inside this function, I'm going to say game object temp is equal to instantiate CBT prefab as game object. We also need to store its rec transform. The only way UI elements appear is if they're inside a canvas. So once it's instantiated, we must set its parent to the enemy canvas. Another thing we need to do in order for it to display properly is set up local position and scale. Add the init cbt function to the hit function, then save and go back into Unity. Select the enemy game object, then drag the combat text prefab into its designated slot. Press play and notice the text looks weird. It's because I forgot to set up the local rotation. So go back to the enemy script and set that up the same way we set up local scale and position. The text should now display normally when you press play. It's not displaying any actual damage numbers yet, so we need to change the init cbt function to take in a string. Now we can pass in the damage from the hit function. In the end of the initialize function, we need to access the temp's text and set it equal to the text that was passed in. And then after that, we need to destroy this dot game object in two seconds. Now we're going to set up the animation for the text. Now open an animation tab. If you don't have one in your scene, go to Window, then select Animation. While you're at it, open an animator tab as well if you don't already have one. Enable the CBT object in the scene again, and I'm going to change its text to a number to get a better idea of what it'll look like in the game. In the Animation tab, select the dropdown and create new clip. Name it CBT Hit. Select the text color and drag its alpha down to zero. Now select the first frame inside the Animation tab to start recording. Select the text color again, drag the alpha out, then back to zero to set its frame. We're going to make the font fade in and then fade back out. So drag the red line a few frames out and set the alpha to max. Then move the red line about double the distance of the fade in and set the alpha of this frame to max as well. Move the line forward a little bit more and set the alpha here to zero. The text now fades in and out, but I'd also like it to rise up. So go to the last frame and set the Y position to around 24. Then select the first frame and set the Y position to negative 1.8. Now go to the animator. Right click, go to create state, then empty. Right click this new state and set it as default. Now click the little plus on the parameters tab and select trigger. Name it hit. Right click on the default state, make transition, then drag the arrow from new state to CBT hit. Select the connection and set the condition to hit. Find the CBT hit animation and make sure loop time is unchecked. Now we need to add some more code to make it animate, so go back to your enemy script. In the end of the init cbt function add temp.getComponentAnimator.setTrigger and then in parentheses put the name of your trigger, in this case hit. Back in Unity, select the cbt game object in the scene, hit apply just in case, and then disable it. 
When you press play now, you should see everything working smoothly. The next thing I'm going to do is implement a second animation for critical hits and show you how to manage multiple animations. In the Animation tab, select the drop-down and create new clip. Name it CBT Crit. Go to around frame 10, then select the CBT text color and drag the alpha all the way up. Also make sure you turn the text game object back on. With the first frame selected, set the X and Y scale to 0. Choose a frame past your alpha frame and set the X and Y scale to 0.6. Go forward several frames, set the X and Y scale to 0.3. Another several frames forward, set the alpha to 0 and the X and Y scale to 0 as well. It's sort of on top of the health bar, so if you don't want that, select the first frame and set the Y position to 5. In the animator, create a new trigger parameter called crit. Make a transition from the default state to the CBT crit state and set the condition of that transition to the trigger we just made. Next we're going to make some adjustments to the enemy script. First take out the line that triggers the animator. Turn the init CBT from a void into game object and add return temp to the very last line. This function now returns the text it created so we can trigger the animator from our hit function. We're doing this because now there's more than one trigger to potentially be called. Add the hit trigger call onto the init CBT inside the hit function. Then add a bool parameter to the hit function named isCrit. Above the init CBT call inside hit, say if exclamation mark is crit. And underneath it, say else. Paste the first init CBT call and change the string to crit. Now over in the bullet script, we need to pass in a bool along with the amount of damage. To do this, create another function that returns a bool. Name the function crit chance. Inside it, say int temp is equal to random dot range 0 to 100. This will give us a random number between 1 and 100, and we can say if it's less than 50, we're going to return true, meaning it's a crit. Otherwise, it'll return false and just be a normal hit. Now we can plug in this function, and every time a bullet hits an enemy, there'll be a 50% chance of it being a critical hit. Before you test this out, find the CBT crit animation and make sure it's not set to loop. Now press play and test this out. The only thing missing is that the enemy doesn't die when its health reaches zero. To fix this, add an if check to the hit function and say if health is less than damage, set the damage amount to health so that you won't go below zero health. Then add a bool and name it dead. Set it to false in the start function, and in the update function say if dead, destroy this dot game object. Lastly, in the hit function, check if health is less than or equal to zero, and then if it is, dead is equal to true.